Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast, Barbecue War Stories. My name is Sean Walchef with Cali Comfort Barbecue, and we are in Flynn Springs, Grand Old Barbecue Iasado, with my man Derek Marceau from Valley Farm Market. What up? I'm just excited to be out here in this fucking beautiful town, dude. We used to come out here when we were younger and come to a place called, it was actually the Flynn Springs where this place uh, took over, and it's been a while since I've been out here, and man, it's changed a lot. It's absolutely gorgeous. Super, super cool. Yeah, we have Andy Harris again, one of our repeat guests. Uh, he was actually on the fourth episode of Behind the Smoke way back in the day when we didn't know what the fuck we were doing, which we still don't. Um, thank you for those of you that have been tuning in for all those episodes because I listened back and God, we were terrible. Um, but we appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, we're really excited. This is something that San Diego needs and it's something that's a bold move and we love people that make bold moves and coming out to, I mean, Derek and I have been in Spring Valley. I know Derek's family has been in Spring Valley for 62 years, but when I told my friends that I grew up with in La Jolla that I was opening a restaurant in Spring Valley, they thought I was fucking from a different planet. Um, they thought I was... Literally, they couldn't comprehend where Spring Valley was, and I'm sure Andy's going through the same thing when he explains to people where Flynn Springs is, and it's really not far at all. It's actually a beautiful drive. I couldn't believe how quick we got out here. So welcome to Behind the Smoke, repeat guest, our barbecue brother, barbecue family. What's up? Very stoked to be here. Thank you for coming, guys, and thank you for coming out here. That's awesome. That's the cool thing about podcasting is if uh, if the guest is special enough and uh, we can make it happen, we're going to bring the podcast to you. It- uh, even though where you do your podcast is a walking distance from my house. This is true. You, you became part of the hood. <laughs> right. You became part of the hood. You Had you moved in uh, in May of... So we pod, we did our podcast no. on May 28th, 2017. Oh, you're, you were doing construction. Oh, that's true. You're, well, yeah, you're I moved in. I moved in in August of 17. So yeah. You're so right. yeah, you weren't even moved in. You were, you're told us about the haunted house that you were living in. The, 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 the drawers would open and close and... You got rid of all the ghosts, though. Yes, right? I got. Yeah, we so had. Good. We had a little. We had a priest come in. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, what brought you to think about opening uh, another establishment, and what made you do it out here in Flint Springs? I mean, I've always been eyeing this area, even before I had this spot. Obviously, this particular spot of the Flint Springs in Old East County, people will know this place, and I knew of this place, but I was actually renting. A uh, caboose, a train caboose down the road. Okay. It's, you know, not even a mile down the road. I'm sorry, you were renting a train caboose? Why, I the, was fuck, renting why a, the fuck were you doing that? It's a good call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do a barbecue restaurant out of it. Yeah. And so, out of the caboose. Out of the caboose. And it, had a, it was on kind of a lot of property. And I, I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing to do. And so I was paying these people not a lot of money just to hold it and trying to figure out where I was going to get the money to build it, you know. So did you get the property and the caboose or just the caboose? It's property and caboose. Okay. And it even had like a cool barn that I was kind of thinking about. I could turn into a dining room. And, you know, it had, they had some really awesome stuff going on there. And But like I said, I was paying a small amount of money just to hold it while I was trying to figure out when I could do it and how I could do it financially. And then I kind of got wind that this place turned into a, a full-blown barbecue restaurant up here. I'm like, oh, that doesn't help, you right. know. And then I heard that Cohen... Uh, David Cohen from Cohen Group was getting involved with the Renegade on the other side down the road even more. And I'm just like, man, I'm sandwiched in between a barbecue restaurant and a David Cohen restaurant, which I bet you is going to be possibly barbecue. What right. you know, It's part yeah. of a barbecue area. I started getting very nervous mm-hmm. about this property. And then Social Syndicate, who I've known for years because we've always been trying to do something together, called me up, said, hey, do you... Uh, are you in a lease? And I'm like, no, I'm not in a lease out here. And I'm like, no, no lease. And they're all, how would you like to do barbecue at a restaurant in, in the Flint Springs area of El Cajon? And I'm all, well, I, you're, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. I'm all, I know what you're talking about. And uh, I, I think I kind of would love to. I think I have to, most likely. And I want to because I wasn't going to be sandwiched in between a social syndicate restaurant and a Cohen Group restaurant. Yeah. And think I was going to pull it off. Right. You know? Well, that's pretty exciting. Were they part of the previous one? No. They weren't? No, they're just friends with some of the partners in it. And so they, they do business with uh, some of the partners in the old, the barbecue restaurant that was here. And they gave them a good deal to buy it. Said, do you want to turn this into a... We think that this place could be a really cool restaurant if some money's put into it. Right. 
and uh, the social syndicate agreed. And since they already liked my barbecue and have always wanted to do a barbecue restaurant with me, it all kind of fell into place. And, I mean, you have a shit ton of room out here, too. <clears throat> when you pull up, it's kind of what we like because where we live, I mean, everything's kind of unassuming. Yeah. You come in here, it's kind of unassuming. Then you walk in, it's a huge open layout. Walk into the back backyard. It's funny I say that. That's backyard. what it's called. No, it's, it's called the backyard. It's, Is it? It's, it said That's that. Great. It says that. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you walk out into the backyard, and, I mean, it's just fucking open. It's huge. You have 2,000-gallon smokers out here mm -hmm. i mean that's just absolutely insane in itself and i mean we're on a stage you're gonna have live music um how what, what's the seating how, how many can you seat out here don't know who's don't asking know uh yeah. fire who's department asking? Asking? Yeah, who's asking? <laughs> do you want to throw a wedding <laughs> <laughs> um These I, are important questions i think it's like 200 inside which is crazy to me i think it looks more like 100 but outside 200 wow I, I, outside i'm not sure i think it looks to me like 300 uh, the prior owner said he's had four or 500 out here before. I don't want to ever do that. I think that'd just be too crazy and tight. I, we will get the real number and we will stick to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's it, smart, but we definitely do want to have some big concerts here and, uh, we will have, you know, for the predominantly, we're going to have local music, but we will have out of town bands, you know, bigger bands play here now and then. Mm -hmm. So and how so, much involvement are you going to have with the booking of the bands with your music background? For the most part, a hundred percent. It's kind of like. I, you know, I'm gonna have. I'm ultimately. I think I'm gonna have to have somebody help me. But this to, is the blending of your two passions. Exactly. So, uh, like right now in the beginning, I'm gonna do it 100. percent Obviously, I'm probably gonna need some help and have some. I probably will get some help ultimately. But in the beginning, it's just gonna be me. Mm -hmm. And if I have a contact I need, my wife is in the music business. She'll be able to give me the contacts I need. And that's that's more for the national bands. The local stuff I got. The locals. That's who calls and gets a hold of me more than anybody about anything is the local bands they're calling me and emailing me a hundred times a day it seems like are you doing certain days for music yeah for right now we're just gonna do friday saturday and sunday okay. and then uh but then i already have a national band some there's uh these folk i forget what they're called right now but they're a pretty popular uh group of uh girls playing folk music from washington state and they're, i got them booked on a thursday so so i will be doing if it's something national and the routes on their touring I'll do something outside of Friday, Saturday. Are Saturday. you going to be focusing on a certain genre or? I mean, it will be predominantly classic country, but I'm not saying we're just sticking to that. Okay. You know, yes, we are going to stick predominantly classic country, but there will, don't, don't think it's going to be a hundred percent of the time. Right. You know, right. that's exciting just in itself, right. just as something new that you can bring. I mean, where else can you do that? Right now, there's not a lot of places where you can actually go have phenomenal food and sit and listen to some good music. I mean, a lot of places that, that show music, you know, I'm not talking shit, but they don't really serve that good of food. Uh, food. So Which place is that? There's just other places that oh, just don't. Oh, I thought it was one place you were talking no. about. No, no, okay. <laughs> they just, no, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, everywhere no. you go, they just don't sell, sell good quality food. No, well, agreed. So, like, just to sit here. So, th the whole thing, I mean, bottom line is, is, like, I just, I have my place in North Park, and I always... The vision of that place from the get-go was, you know, being in Austin so much, seeing these outdoor little joints that are kind of put together, and they kill it, and me just saying, we have better weather, why aren't we doing this? And that's what inspired that place, and it worked. And now this place is more like, I, out in Austin, there's there's Destination Barbecue, there's, you know, obviously Salt Lake, there's Snows, there's all these, like, bar destination-type places that are a little bit outside of town, and people can take a drive and get away from it all. And then we're not even that far away. So that's what inspired this place. Yeah, I think that's something really cool. I heard um, Scott Kaplan, who has a podcast as well, he interviewed the CEO and founder of Kaboo. Mm -hmm. and he was talking about the experience economy and kind of what people are gravitating towards. And it's doing something different and doing something unique and blending entertainment and hospitality in a way that, like Derek said, you don't go to a great concert and typically be able to get great food. You know, and it, it's kind of the same way around. And if you can blend both of those things and you can create a destination that's different and unique, I mean, it's something that it, it's really exciting. No, that's that's exactly it. That's what we we want to do. Obviously, we're going to respect the locals. And there's people who live in these neighborhoods who have been coming here for years and we love to have their business and they will be treated as locals. But also we want to get the people from that aren't from around here to come out here and see what's going on and how, how cool it is and how, you know, I was even talking to David Cohen about it, how between us and the renegade, we should do some cross promotion as, as 
drive 20 minutes outside the city and pretty much you're in the middle of texas yeah you know and so and he completely he's like i agree a rising tide yeah so, all ships so we talk about that frequently so it's just like people can get in their car and be, really feel like they're in the center of texas do you have any uh, restrictions on on noise do you have to be shut down at a certain time yes or? and however it will change um so right now, the live music does have to end at 8 p.m. And going into the winter isn't going to be that big of a deal. Um, in the summer, it sucks, basically. But in June, in the coming June, we can petition to get that time raised. And, we're, and we were told by some people, we're pretty sure we'll be able to get that raised. Oh, that's good. So we have to stay. So 8 p.m. till June. And then hopefully in June, we can get that time raised till you know, 10 or 11 on Friday and Saturday. That's all I'd really want. So what happens with, <clears throat> for me, I mean, I'm very naive to all this, but do you do like 21 and up for concerts? Is it a family thing? Is it, how, it's, how do you do that? Uh, this, this place will always be till 9 p.m. All ages, okay. all families. That's why we got the play structures for the kids. Right. They can set out blankets out there and eat barbecue with their kids and watch music all day because we will have music all day on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. You know, and so it's totally family. That's what it's about. It's about sitting out here with your kids and having some good barbecue and watching some live music. But at 9 p.m., the place does become 21 and up okay. and a little bit more, you know, for the grownups out after nine. Open sure. till when? Um, I think we're going we're gonna to try 2 a.m. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, we'll that, see. That scares the shit out of me. <laughs> 2 a.m.? Yeah. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I've always just thought about it, though. When we were looking at doing the Nicky Rottens, uh, buying that one over by the Cottonwood Golf Course, you know, it has no restrictions on the music. It's everything's a go over there. And I'm like, man, the, the thing that scares me the most is having that phone call at 2 a.m., you know, was, there's a fight or there's, you know, because this place out here was known for its, its rough crowd. And you're going to be able to get over that with creating this family environment that you guys have already done. Well, to, I will say I hired the best GM in the business to handle that situation because I thought about that. Right. And spent a lot of money on him. Who's that? <laughs> John Patton. You guys met him. He's, uh, he's been in the business for a long time. And has opened a lot of big, big restaurants that I don't know if we should name or not, but uh, we didn't skimp on that. So I, I better not be getting that two in the morning phone call. <laughs> Dude, that's, sure. that's a big deal. I mean, people, those are the things that keep business owners up at night. You know, even when I first started, it was it was the coolers or something. I'm like, I just, I don't want to walk into a mess. And now being able to, you know, we got new coolers and stuff. We fixed all those problems, but just those unknowns are, are oh. really, really scary. I've been, I've been witnessing your cooler yeah yeah issues as yeah. i shop at your market at least five days a week not an exaggeration well i i appreciate that we we really do but i'm just i'm happy it's done i would and, imagine so and, and now we are going to do do the fascia and we're going to get new products in we got a unfi just came in we're going to do a whole new kind of reset of that whole area um so we're, we're excited but it, it just took a lot longer than what we anticipated it usually, didn't seem that long does. to me yeah. it didn't usually seem that does. long to me but i guess to you when you're watching the the dollars, the not dollar. coming. Yeah. How, so. how long were the people, uh, the city, redoing the sidewalk in front of your place? Because it didn't seem long to me, but I'm sure it seemed like forever for you. <laughs> I, can't in North you Park. I can't believe you remember that. <laughs> I remember I that, everything. I put that out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh, man, that was hellish. I'm pretty sure I think it was two and a half years. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's hilarious. So, are you going to do pretty much the same style? You know, same, I mean, obviously the same style, but the same style menu as you do in North Park. Well, how are you going to do it out here? So, no, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to be the the mainstays will be here. We are a Central Texas barbecue restaurant for the most. For, we are. That's what we do. So, of course, the brisket, the turkey, the ribs, the, the mainstays. Mm -hmm. um, but we hired a chef, Chef Ami. She's been around San Diego. She's worked a lot, a lot of cool restaurants in the last few years. And we're going to have prime steaks, hamburgers, chili. You know, a full blown mm. menu outside wow. of the barbecue. Super wow. cool. So just because you know, you can't. Some people just can't eat barbecue. You know, more than once or twice a week. It's, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, I'm I mean, one of those guys. I, too. I fucking <laughs> yeah. we're, we're the worst. <laughs> full, full transparency behind yeah. the smoke. Yeah. I, mean, I think we're all one of those guys. Even, so so even, they, now they can keep coming here. Yeah. Even you today know? we went down to Rock 105.3. We got presented an award and give them all barbecue, and they're talking. I'm like, I can't. I can't eat my barbecue. I just 
I've done it for so long. I can eat other people's easier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Much it's a easier. Di- slight different taste. Much easier. Right. You yeah. Know, I know the taste of my pits mm-hmm. to a T. Right. And, and so if I taste another pit, I can I can deal with it a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah. So And it's the same thing with like carne asada and pollo asada. I grew up on that shit. Like my dad and my mom brought that home all the you time. You can't eat it anymore? I'm, I'm over it. Really? I'm over it. Yeah. I don't think I could ever get sick of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. It's, it's yeah. definitely not. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it every once in a while, but it's not very often. You're not going to catch me very often eating that stuff. So. <laughs> That's why, I mean, I love going to your place or, you know, to Cali just to get away, get a, you know, a quick little lunch. And it's the same thing. It's just like, it's my own stuff. I, I got to get away and go do something else. Right. But I get it. That's awesome, though, that you're expanding your menu. I didn't think you were going to do that. That's really cool. Can you, I got a question. Though, cause yeah. Can you still eat your pokey? Yeah, I can eat my pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you can I'm, always uh, eat the pokey. Yeah, yeah. The pokey, I actually do the pokey probably once a day. Just See? like a little quarter pound or half pound of regular or, or spicy for right sure. oh, i love your pokey yeah. so good it's been been good it's uh you know one of those things that i don't know if i even told the story on the podcast yet but how i got to do it is that i i used to surf and i was in hawaii and i got the recipe when i was younger and with the family they were teaching me that what really goes into a true pokey you know i was i was at um, valley farm in the butcher shop a lady comes up and it's valentine's day and this is six years ago and she goes hey you know, I've been looking all over the, for this thing called poke. My husband really <laughs> lives, likes that it. it's from Hawaii. I'm like, I think you mean pokey. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm like, or she's like, do you know anyone that makes it around San Diego? I'm like, you know what, maybe like a 99 Ranch, but I, I don't really know. This was before the big boom, right? Before oh, yeah. everyone started selling well, there's pokey. a pokey restaurant every corner. Yeah. And um, I'm like, but I can make you, I mean, I know a recipe. I can, I can do one for you real quick. And she's like, okay. So I whip up a batch. It probably took me like, you know, 10 minutes to get all the ingredients and get it done. She tried it, and she's like, oh, my God, that is absolutely phenomenal. Well, there was, like, three other people in line, and they all tried it. And they're like, can I get a pound? Can I get a pound? Since that day, there's not been a day that we haven't seen yeah, pokey. pokey. That yeah. started the Pokey Revolution. That, that was it. And pokey Revolution. Now we have four Love different it. variations. Still my favorites, my original, and the spicy. I, I, that's get, the, it. I get the original and the spicy. That's it. That's, that's it. That's I've, I've got the other ones, and they're all good. But our whole thing, like, my daughter, she went pescatarian. She pretty much still is. And some, I'll buy me my wife and my son a steak and literally buy her a bag of tortilla chips and a pokey yeah is she the reason you do salmon on the weekends on sunday i don't even know she's ever had it (laughs) (laughs) i'm not eating your salmon dad (laughs) um but no so she uh she's so yeah, so that's what I get her. It's easy. I grab. We're it getting so much closer to getting these fucking wonton chips that I've been trying so hard to get. Ooh, wonton it with is that. So hard to get someone that wants to do a consistent wonton chip. I ate a bag of wonton chips like two days ago. I said, "How come these aren't bagged?" <laughs> right. You know, and I guess this is hard. It's I mean, so it's so yeah. hard. So we're working with someone. They're they're uh, we're we're talking them into it. I'm I'm going to give them a minimum order because I think I can sell them and just have them bang them out because I think that's something that a wonton chip with that pokey. Mm. Forget it. That's it. I'll tell oh you yeah. The best. I'm in. Yeah. So when you go for a, this is a full 47, like liquor license? Yeah, yeah. Full liquor license. So full two liquor, bars. So two liquor, uh, two bars, full liquor license. Uh, one of the things that we talk about often is liability. Um, it's always great to get a full liquor license because you get to that profit margin that you don't get when you're selling barbecue. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so that's great. But also you want to create a safe environment and you want to create a place that families feel welcome. And like we were talking about before, you don't want this to turn into a place where fights are happening. Well, that's why I'm going to look to you for help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things uh, one of the things that we were lucky and not just lucky, but forward thinking is mm-hmm. exactly that is figuring out, well, what kind of brand are we creating? What kind of environment are we creating? Because the environment that you create in your space dictates how people are going to act. So Agreed, even when 100%. we when we first came into Spring Valley, I mean, an NFL Sunday, we'd have people come in and they, you know, would come in with their jerseys and they would mad dog people. And instead of, you know, being intimidated, we would welcome them. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? And they like they were so thrown off by someone being friendly because literally they just mad dog all the time. Are you talking so, about Raider fans right now? <laughs> <laughs> Am I describing a Raider fan? <laughs> <laughs> to a T. <laughs> I'm actually describing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? And it's when you create that culture. And even though, I mean, on NFL Sunday, we have Lee King, who's an absolute all star. He does our fight nights. He does our barbecue events. But he's security, not in a way that secure you would think of security. Right. He's in a way that he takes it as hospitality. He's welcoming people into the village. And he's just there to set the tone to know, hey, 
we care enough to have somebody in the parking lot to help you park and welcome you. And if it's raining, he's going to bring out an umbrella. Right. That changes the entire dynamic. No, it's true. And so I am. And to be honest, I did think about these things. And based, and I've said it now in a few different interviews and things. And people asking me is I, I pretty much, you know, I designed the most of how this place looks, not all, but most. And a big thing I'll say is it kind of looks like a place you wouldn't want to fight in. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. You know, I mean, like, what, are you going to fight next to the choo-choo train? Yeah. Fight next to the choo-choo <laughs> train. Prick. or <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Or my, you know, the cartoon wall. It's just like, <laughs> are you going to fight in front of that, you weirdo? Right. You know? So, like, <laughs> so how many beers are you guys are you guys going to have on tap? A lot. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know why I haven't counted. <laughs> I guess the one reason I haven't counted is because Social Syndicate, that's where their specialty is. They own okay. a lot of bar restaurants. Resident and, Brewing? Yeah. they have. Well, they have the beer company, but then all the restaurants are you know more bar-orientated than anything I'm used to. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've given them pretty much full control on that. That's awesome. I'm, letting the, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know what to do. So they've we've added a lot more taps. It's a lot of taps, as you can see, because we have a full row inside of, I think, 24 inside. I think it's 24 and 24. So I think it's 48. Are you going to double at all? Or are you There's going to be... be some doubles. Okay. Some doubles, like uh, the ones that, you know, we're working out deals with, like Shiner Bar, because it will be a double. And Shiner's been really cool to us. Really? Yeah, yeah Shiner's been really helpful Did with us. Did you reach out to them? or? Yeah, yeah, we reached out to them and said, hey, look, this is what we got going on. I mean, look at them. Yeah, and that's, that's, not even, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. We got, yeah. into, you know, just they're just been nothing but amazing. And with that being said, it's like, you know, we're, give, we're giving it a better price. Right. Yeah. And so... Um, well, you're... I mean, you're bringing Central Texas barbecue right. to the West Coast barbecue movement. I mean, you're popularizing. I mean, there's a reason why you got these pits, right? Right. No, no. That's that's, that's those are Central Texas pits. It's, it's what I'm bringing here. Authentic. And authentic. And we tried with all our might, and it, even, it came down to the wire of getting Lone Star. And we thought we. I mean, we were all we. We thought we were going to pull it off. We were all like giving each other high fives. We we're going to be the first restaurant in San Diego to fully have Lone Star. And then at the last minute, they basically—I mean, long and short—they told us we basically had to buy a truckload. Right. And uh, and in even between this restaurant and my other restaurant and all the other social syndicate restaurants, which we said we'll do it all of them, mm-hmm. we're like it, they, they said that's just too much, it's too scary. Right. You know, and yeah. so it got pulled underneath. Maybe someday when well, you hit, I mean, when you hit the volume. Yeah. It's good because maybe they just didn't buy into the vision yet. And Shiner Box, amazing, like you said, they're already doing so much. Right. They're buying into what you're doing. Right. And it's it's better to have those type of people in your corner Agreed. than it is someone that f- they feel like they're doing you a favor. Like this is a two way street. Agreed. You're doing them a favor. They're doing you. It, it works so much better that way. And if it was the other way, and they're like, "Oh, you have to do a minimum of a fucking full truck," and go fuck yourself. You know what now, I mean? That's kind of so what much. it was. Shiner. I mean, not Shiner. Uh, I get Lone Star's always been. It's hard to find. You know, you, I've seen. You've, I've seen Lone Star and Bevmos here, and they ship a little bit out for military guys. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's very little. But they they try to keep it special. They try to keep it Texas. You right. know? So, but yeah, they they weren't very helpful. Shiners. The East Coast does that with Yingling. Yingling. Mm-hmm. Yingling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're even tighter. Yeah, they're even tighter right here. So yeah. things like the fr- thirteen original colonies are the only ones yeah. that get that beer. Yep. And it's it's a good it's, beer. It's good. I mean, yeah. it's nothing to fucking write home about. But, but when you put a restriction on something, it becomes even tastier for some reason. Look at Pliny. The reason why they won't fucking make more Pliny at Russian River. He's right. like, look. He's like, I've had people throw millions and millions of dollars at me. And they're like, we'll open up another brewery. We'll buy this place. You'll be 90% owner. I'll only want 10%. And we'll just run Pliny all day. He's like, no. Right. It, it gets rid of like what what we choo- what we choose to do. We want <laughs> we supply, and, supply about and demand. It. It's fun. We talked about it the other day. Actually, yesterday. We were, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at different, doing different things. But it's the, uh, sometimes when you have a huge line somewhere, People want to know why is there a line there, and, right. and they, they they get drawn to that like they're missing out on something. Trust me, I, well, I understand that. If you uh, don't have that line anymore, it's kind of like just something that doesn't really matter. Yep. So mm-hmm. it's uh, the same thing that goes with beer. It's man, but Russian River does an amazing job. But Pliny the Elder, it's we get it two cases a week, and it fucking flies right, right flies right out. I, I the first time I ever had Pliny was from you. Yeah. Um, now I hear rumor I might be able to get it here. I'm I'm shooting for actually going to make the call when I get the when I get done with you guys. That'd be amazing. It'd be interesting. I'd be I think I think it'd be the only one in East, East County to have it. It'd be awesome. I think. It'd be awesome. I think I, I think you, yeah. you would know. I can't think of anybody else that have, have it, has it. The only person that would be eligible probably to get it would be Brody's, mm-hmm. and he's oh so over them because they're like they want, <laughs> they want to. Man, I'd really it. I'd really put the nail in that coffin if I got it. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> man. 
I just have friends of friends type of things. Right. Yeah. You know, they're, right. They are trying, well, try it's to, important. Yeah. It's yeah. important to use those friends of friends. Right. And I think, you know, for us, we have people that listen to the podcast and they want to start their barbecue business. They want to get into catering or they want to own a restaurant. And one of the things that people don't talk about is those vendor relationships and knowing that when we first opened, I mean, fuck, we got ran over by multiple different vendors. And we're talking about not people that Coca-Cola. I mean, literally, you know, we had Coca-Cola and you'd think we could get somebody to come out and service us. Great. They didn't give a shit about us. No. It took meeting a Pepsi rep at a U.S. foods show mm -hmm. where the Pepsi reps like, what do you need? I'll run through a fucking wall for you. I'll rewire your bar. Dude. I'll get you new guns, whatever you need. And. As much as I love Coca-Cola, I'm like, hey, we're going with Pepsi, and Pepsi's been nothing but incredible. you know. But those are the things that, along the way, you learn as a business owner that you need to make a stand. And I know Derek, I watched Derek do it, and I've watched us do it, and you have to start dictating the things. Hey, fucker, you need to bring, your, you need to bring my delivery before 9 a.m. Because we open at 11, and I'm not going to have your truck in the middle of the fucking parking lot clogging up all the spots. Right. No, trust me. I, I don't want to bore listeners of this who aren't really in the restaurant business, but... Just I was talking the other day about it, how basically my rep, we use a company called Shamrock who delivers all our food, you know, a lot of our food. And my first rep from Shamrock who came in the day we opened and poached me away from another company. Basically, I don't even know if I'd still be in business business if it wasn't for him. Yeah. yeah. He taught me how to buy. And yeah. he and you know, you're loyal he, to him. Oh, very loyal. Absolutely. Yeah. So he, he taught me where the guy I was buying from before. All he was doing was really trying to make a quick buck off me. Transactional. And, yeah. And 100% and, transactional. And, and char overcharging me crazy. Just like looked at me as a shack that was probably going to be out of business in a half a year and trying to make a quick buck off me. All he me. gave a shit about his quarterly numbers yeah. or his sales stats. And, and, his and I know the guy who took Mander his wing did too, but thought of it more in a long-term sense and it worked. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He taught me everything I know about buying. Well, you bring that up, and I think Sean and I have a mutual person that did that for us at U.S. Foods. Right. His name was Brad Newberg, and there's, for whatever reason, I, I have a great relationship with Harvest Meat Company. They're like right. family to me, and you know, we we go back long, long time with my dad. And but U.S. Foods came in, they're like, "Look, I want to be your number two. Like, let me know what I can do to earn your business." And then he walked through, and he, it was the weirdest thing that I got so much, I was so happy about. He told me he was going to give me a price list. And he gave me a price list. Right. Like these other people, they, they just like, oh, yeah, I'll do this. And three weeks later, like, oh, I fucking forgot to do that right. or whatever. And this guy, he was so on it. And he was looking, he's like, we'll get you on a cost plus program. This is what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's my margin. I'm showing you exactly what we're doing. Right. And there was just this, you know, relationship where I knew, look, I know you have to make a living. And I'm 100% okay with that. Right. And so do I. But don't bend me over. And we can work together. And Brad did that. And that's how we actually started working with U.S. Foods a little bit. We don't do a, a ton of business with them because we mm -hmm. don't you know, do a ton of uh, restaurant stuff. But that's, uh, those relationships are, are huge. My uncle was notorious for being a complete dick to all the vendors and drivers. <laughs> and I could not <laughs> fucking stand it. I, right. I hated it. I hate when he, he would be little people. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we got a delivery for you. He's like, yeah, I'll be with you in a, in a few minutes. And he's not doing anything but, like, moving a few apples around in the produce. Right. I'm like, give me a fucking break, dude. So I would go out there and I'd tell him, hey, he's got a job he's got to do. Right. So if we work together, he's going to want to come in here, help me out. If I ever need anything, I'm like, hey, this shit was, wasn't any good. He'll take it back, give me a credit, no problem. But if it's my uncle... He'd be like, fuck you. That's well, yours. Keep it. You right. know, it's all about relationships in this business. I agree. I agree. Why, uh, why did you bring on a partnership? I mean, you, you said you guys want, you wanted to do something with social syndicate. And I think, you know, for being someone that's been successful on their own, someone that's, I mean, established there, it's yourself. an easy two part answer. One is I hadn't now we've been trying to do something together for over a year, maybe almost close to two years they were on me going to the north park location we got to do something together we got to do something together we just think what but it felt right it wasn't like salesy like you you respected no. the concept oh that they it was it wasn't yeah. salesy at all yeah it, it was, was like, it was more it was bro out yeah, stuff exactly yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah, fuck, yeah let's yeah, make let's make yeah. something happen let's do something cool no it was definitely bro out yeah. stuff it wasn't salesy just like let's do something together we had a couple things fall through and then the number two is I could have never afforded to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't do it on my own. I think that's it's huge to know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses right. are. And in order to accomplish things that are right. big picture and 
like I said in the beginning, bold. I mean, you got to be fucking bold to come out here and invest this amount of money in a dream, in a vision. That's right. what you're selling. And right. fuck, right when we walked in here, it's just, I mean, the pictures I've seen, I mean, Derek Dawson, he came out here um, last weekend. He did a live video and just seeing everybody out here eating on the picnic tables, the smokers going, people eating the food. It's fucking exciting, man. It's super exciting. It's pretty exciting. I can't wait to really get open with all the bands. And I know this will air next Friday, and I don't know what's going to be going on that day, so I'm not going to try to predict it <laughs> um but i hope i'm not going to hold you to it but on the last podcast you said uh, that you said that this place would be open in august of 2017 that was we that, talked about we that talked was the other about, one well you can go back and listen yeah, to it but yeah. we said we're like hey i'm working on a project flynn springs i don't know i don't want to open it, in the it was summer. the caboose it was the caboose it was, oh it was the caboose it was yeah. the caboose. okay all it, right it, it, so it was it, low and slow so you were you yeah, weren't you was, weren't that far off so the caboose Probably wouldn't have been open then either, but, uh, but, but uh, <laughs> it takes so much fucking money. It's, yeah. it's, it's very dangerous what you say on the podcast yeah. because Sam, the cooking guy, we had him on the first time and we asked him, are you going to open up a restaurant? He's like, everyone wants me to open a restaurant. I'm not going to do it. Unless yeah. next thing you know, he's opening up a little Italy. Yeah. So, you know, no, but, that's why I'm not going to pretend to say anything. Just <laughs> we're going to be open seven days a week yeah. coming on October uh, 5th. When Grand old barbecue drops. on Facebook. <laughs> Look at it and you will get updated. That's all there is I can say for that. There's so many things that are just are out of our hands. And, you know, we it happens with construction all the time. They're like, look, whatever you think you're going to pay for construction, times it by three. Um, whenever you think you're going to be open, times that by three. Because it just it always takes just that much more time, whether it's permits or the ABC or whoever it is, you know, getting involved. Or if you're just not fucking ready. The, the money's not there. The design's not there. It just takes so much longer than, than you think. I'm, I'm notorious. And, you know, we, we had Josh Kieber on here. He's one of my best friends who, who owns uh, Next Gen Building Group. And whenever I have him help me with stuff in construction, like, I'm like, dude, we can, you should be, be able to bring out my bathroom in like two days. And he's yeah. like, dude, like, no, that's not how shit works. I'm like, he's well, like, this well, motherfucker's did, did over here tile? sitting down eating lunch <laughs> when he should be fucking working, you know? But that's just how I work. Right. Like, I'm all like, if I'm doing something, I'll work 20 hours a day and I'll just try to get it done. He's like, well, that's that's just not reality. It's you know they legally have to give a lunch and they have to do all these things. And Trust like, me. Oh yeah, I, I, I get it for sure. So the people that haven't heard the first podcast, tell us about the barbecue, the meats that you're cooking. Last last time you told us you were going through a quart a week at the North Park location. Are you still a quart a week there, or are you have you ramped up? Yeah, I think because of the new smoker, it's ramped up. I think it's, it's about, ramped up about a quart and a half. You have a consistent vendor. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. you were at a switch, I believe. Yeah, I went. I, I at a switch. You guys, we were both at a switch. I went back. They ended up doing good by yeah. me. He was what I'm good. talking about. So yeah. they they ended up doing good by me. That's good. So and now with this, I'm putting some pressure on them. I'm getting the prices down. Good. Because I'm going to be buying. Don't try to fucking do that with your sausage. Don't you fucking. <laughs> you get you that, gave, shit, you you get <laughs> that shit for fucking. Fingers. That's a whole different conversation. First of all. <laughs> I'll never, ever, ever, ever try to get you to go lower on your price. You give me an amazing deal. An amazing deal. The you don't want to try to fuck Derek? The que- I think I already am. The, co- the, question, the, the, the question is, uh, is Jeremy going to handle more? Oh, he'll be fine. All right, because I, I had him make an extra 100 for me. Is for, he complaining? For here. Is yeah. he complaining? Uh, no, the guy's badass. But <laughs> he is a badass. I'll be honest with you. I can tell his sausage from other people's sausages. The can guy, you? He can make a... Yeah, he makes a mean sausage. We actually have an automatic big stuffer. It's right. a water-driven uh, stuffer. That if we have to start doing more, that's what we'll end up doing. Jeremy so. makes a mean well, hot link. He does. He Before- is. And, and you know what? It's it's funny. Jeremy's you know he's such an amazing guy. He works so fucking hard. And when he's really into something, like mm-hmm. he takes complete ownership of it. He does. And he's like, dude, do not. All of a sudden, I'm like. Dude, you're not scheduled till like nine today. What are you doing? He's like, Ugh, I got to get in here and make any sausage. Like, I'm not going to clock in. I'm like, no, clock, clock in. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. It's, uh, it's all good. No, I'm just happy we can collaborate and do stuff like that because I truly feel that that's what this is about is us all working together. I want you to succeed just as much as you want you, yourself to succeed. It, it's truly something for me to be able to be like that. That's awesome. I want him to do well, and that's why I, I took on the the thing to do your guys' sausage. It was. Uh, Charlie gets mad at me because it cuts into his margin of what he's supposed to make for the week, but he, he'll be fine. He'll be totally fine. Actually, I want to talk to you about something. It hit me while you're talking. So, all, so the it'd be really cool. I don't know if this is a topic for this. Can you edit this out? <laughs> <laughs> we don't edit shit, dude. I, we don't fucking edit it's anything. It's gonna be boring. It's just gonna be boring. It's just gonna be boring. I'll talk about it later. No, you can you go talk for about it. I'm ready. talk about it. No, it's because we're all the local. This is the shit people so, don't don't hear. You gotta so talk about basically, it. 
the, the one thing we're doing here is I want for all the local beer companies, you know, we're going to we have a few macro beers like Budweiser and things like that. The mainstays we have to have them and we're cool to have them. But for the most part, we're going to have a, sh- a shit ton of local beer. Right. And the one thing we're asking for from the local beer companies is a neon. And yeah. we have a guy who's making them. I, mean, I don't know if you make it. So, dude, we, I know the, the one sign fell down. It got back put back up. It's up now for the hot links at Grand Ole Barbecue. But I would love a Valley Farms Hot Links Neon. Let's fucking do it. That would be badass. I'm into it. That would be badass. Give me the guy's number. I'll make it happen. Is this guy saw it would be like 400 bucks. In. Yeah. Done. Done. Yep. Fuck yeah. Oh, See? Look at that. Making that deals on You gave me such a good deal. I should I pay for it. that. I'd just be badass. No. Neons. I, uh... Because <coughs> my coffee make... We're going to have breakfast here on Saturdays and Sundays. That's one thing I'd like to throw out there. Yeah. Cool. That we will have breakfast out here on Saturday and Sundays. What time? Um, I'm not sure yet. I don't want to say that. So, so um, <laughs> I'll hold you to it. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to have breakfast and we're going to have coffee and it's a, co- uh, it's a coffee roasted in Alpine. So it's oh, like, nice. I'm all, I want, I'm all, I want a neon that says the name cafe 99, which is the name of his, co- uh, roasted, he, roasted in Alpine. I wanted to say that. That's awesome. I'm all, cause that means something roasted in Alpine here. You know, it's just like, I want that to be. That's cool. So I want, uh. Derek's Wieners made in Spring Valley. <laughs> My Wieners. Yeah. Derek's <laughs> Wieners. <laughs> meat for your mouth. Derek's meat for your mouth. Well, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of Wieners, we're doing an eating and drinking event that's coming up at yes. the North Park location with uh, Edwin. The first time that I actually met you was doing the smoke out um, eating and drinking event where we got to meet Brad. Actually, we knew Brad because we'd been doing stuff with him. But I met Hannes for the first time. Ivan, we knew. Um, got to meet you, had a fucking great time, and this is going to be an Oktoberfest event? It's October. We're doing smoked German food. October 15th. I hope. Can we make it any co- more complicated? Because I still don't understand what, what's happening. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> we'll put links... In the, but hopefully by the time this episode drops, we'll have links in the show notes for people that they can buy tickets yes. and come out yeah, to the yeah, event. No, it's going to be October 15th. I think that's on me to do that, but I need, <laughs> I need more information. You're too so, busy podcasting. Yeah, so I, wear your leader hose and uh, <laughs> drink and smoke some meat. I think you'll be fine. Smoke some meat and some sausage. You guys got shit. your license now in North Park to sell alcohol? Yeah, we sell beer and wine now. Awesome. So And we still allow BYOB. But it's just, you just got to buy a bracelet for $5. Do you need a special license for to be able to drink on your property when when you didn't? You always had BYOB? Always. And did you have to have anything? Or? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what are you talking about? The liability was on the guest bringing it in. <laughs> Actually, we didn't know it was BYOB till like right, right at the very end, we caught it. And we're like, whoa, we got to stop this. And, uh, <laughs> And we caught it, and uh, we tried to stop it, and then we got our own, and it's all good. Right. Everything's all good. Yeah, Everything, totally <laughs> Everything's great now. Uh, Everything's great. Holy shit. So you're, uh, you're hiring, right? We're hiring here at the at, uh, Grand Bar- what kind Barbecue. Of, what kind of talent are you looking for? Um, talent. Talent. <laughs> people that show up. People that show up. Yeah. Just looking for talent. Just uh, message us at uh, the Grand Ole Barbecue Flint Springs Facebook if you're – if you have any type of uh, bartending or serving skills or cash register skills or kitchen skills, uh, what are some other skills? <laughs> Numchuck uh, skills. Numch- what are what are the <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite skills? <laughs> yeah. I could throw a football over those mountains. <laughs> um, well, how about let's talk about Del Mar because we have the the peaks. Oh, let's the not pe- talk about that. <laughs> the peaks and let's not, let's not talk about. Come on, I don't want to talk. This is behind the smoke. You say, barbecue you say, wars. You talk about the low, the end, the high. <laughs> yes, I guess I should be able to. I guess I should be able to share. share. You should be able to because it's helpful. Explain myself. It's helpful. All right, I'm you save the you save the event. Second year, you fucking came from Montana. Yeah. You were on a family vacation. Yeah. I kept pestering you. Andy, are you going to come to Del Mar? We really need you. Grand Ole Barbecue is the best. People are going to love it. Like, come on out. Derek's hot harassing you. We didn't actually expect you to fucking come. Like, we totally didn't expect you. You drove across the, across, we left across like, the nation. We, to, be, to be straight, we left like two days early for you. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. You, We ended your family vacation. Yeah. So, and, and, and to be honest with you, I always push the vacations. So I think my wife was like the one, you need to do that. Yeah. And she's just trying to get home. Right. You know? <laughs> she's just sitting in the cabin all day while I'm fishing. <laughs> right. So, so, so she didn't care. She said, let's just go home. You got to do that thing. And so nice. my wife pushed at it. And I loved it. It was an awesome event. And then this year, of course, I'm going to do it again. And I think what the story we're getting at is I... True to grand old barbecue form, uh, but th- I swear this was not in planned by any means, is we sold out really quick. And all it was was 
the I just wasn't paying attention, and then right when the thing started, and it was kind of a VIP thing, which I wasn't really aware. I was aware, but I wasn't putting it all together in my head. And I had people who don't normally work for me working for me, and we were giving out crazy portions, mm-hmm. crazy portions. Yep, and just full meal portions. And then all of a sudden, I'm kind of just going, "This is cool, whatever, fine, mellow, it's a mellow event, whatever." Bam! One, 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 the, <laughs> one, one of the gates <laughs> open, yeah. shit hit the fan. And I'm just like, "Dude, we're done. These guys are gonna hate me. This sucks. This is gonna be gone." <laughs> I kept on looking in all the pots, going, "That's almost gone. That's almost gone." I'm like, "We brought enough for." 5,000 freaking people and it's just gone. Yeah. And so I was not proud of that moment. Were you, were you aware that you were won, you won the award? No, I was, I was hammered in the raft, in the seats at, uh, <laughs> watching horse races <laughs> and the sh- chef on me. Did you win on the horse? Did you bet on barbecue? You lost. Did you bet on the horses and win? No, 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 my God, won what? And she's all, you won best seafood. I'm all, that that's fitting, I guess. I like, won the best seafood, or sec- <laughs> second best, second best, second best in seafood. I'm like, well, I'm I'm glad I did that. That's it. Kind of helped me feel because I was kind of I did wasn't a little bit of a low. I, you were. I, I wasn't. You were. I, I, I told you to get your shit together. I, you made you're me feel fine. better. You're, you're like, fine. you're fine. I'm like, dude, you're like, dude, I have a big enough event here. We don't need <laughs> you. you. So <laughs> I didn't like, say that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't say that. I leave that for Derek. No. But uh, I'm just like, I did. Cop, bad cop. That was not me. Not It was a lack of planning. That was a straight up just serving too big because I thought that's what the how the flow was going to go. Well, yeah. So we next, got, uh, next year, I'll fix it. And we have Spring Valley coming up. Spring Valley's coming up. Yep. So when this episode comes out, we'll have one week left for signups. So if you haven't signed up, uh, hopefully we still have space. This will be the most teams we've had Unbelievable. in Spring Valley. Unbelievable. 26 in the, in the teams last already signed up. 26 fucking teams. You get a lot of these. Like the guy who won the whole thing up in Del Mar for the for the uh, People's Choice type yep. thing. Mm-hmm. He's just he's Yard Pirates. Yard Pirates. He's a caterer, I yeah. see, right? Yeah. yeah. They're just opening up their catering business. They've a lot of been, those guys just uh, trying yeah, to figure it out and going to different yeah. events. And, you know, the process. it's always great when your family tells you how great your barbecue is <laughs> because, I mean, they're pretty much they, they have to. But it's when you start to hear it from other people and you give it right. to the public and you start to build momentum. And oh, I think that's, that's what they're Exactly doing. what happened with me. Yeah. You know. I was a caterer. I was, me and Brandon, the manager at North Park, we catered together for like five years, six years before we even considered and then. It's been everything so gradual with Grand Ole Barbecue. So are you going to be spending the most of your time here or um, in North Park? Here, definitely. Just like North Park, I was there every day for, you know, a year and a half or so. And, right. and then gradually kind of had got to be able to pull out of there a little bit. And and same thing's going to go with here. So right. I'm going to have to be here every day for a while. And hopefully by the time I can start exiting here a little bit, I'll be looking at something different. I don't know. We'll see. I got to keep moving. So. That's awesome. That's exactly how I feel. It's yeah. always, I'm not a very good stagnant person. No, no. I always got to keep doing something. Well, we are absolutely excited for you, man. We, we can't wait. We will do a, a meetup once uh, with our listeners. Oh, yeah, behind the once smoke meetup. Once you're uh, ready to go. Officially open. We will uh, bring a whole crew up here and get down with some uh, phenomenal barbecue, man. We're, we're stoked for it. And just to have another great barbecue place out here in East County. Um, it's awesome. It's really no, awesome. We're, we're stoked. And like I said, people, please look to our socials on Facebook, Grand Ole Barbecue, Flint Springs, or even Grand Ole Barbecue, Iasato, and North Park will have the same information. Absolutely. Just, just stay tuned to when we're actually going to be open. But until then, we are opening on the weekends. And so I assume next weekend when this airs, we'll be open this weekend as well. Perfect. So, yeah, no matter where you listen in the world, we're you know fortunate to have people that tune in all over the world. And you know when we started this podcast, it was... You know, the sexy Instagram photos, they come later. You know, we're really going behind the smoke to talk about the shit that happens, the vendor relationships, the liquor license, all the other stuff. But you really do have sexy fucking photos. So if no matter where you are in the world, follow Andy, uh, follow Grand Ole Barbecue, both um, the one Flint Springs as well as uh, Grand Ole Barbecue Iasato, um, if you want to see how to properly plate your barbecue. Um, they do a phenomenal job. You ain't lying. Uh, follow, uh, if you hashtag behind the smoke, um, every week we do a social shout out. This week is going to Del Mar BBQ Co. Um, he's been tagging us, um, enjoying the process. If it, if he's in Del Mar and he's not a part of the Turf and Surf, um, let this be known. You win your mug, but you've also signed yourself up for next year. So apples and oranges, uh, Will Appleby, uh, we will see you up at Turf and Surf next year. But uh, we'll be sending you your behind the smoke mug. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for uh, subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with your friends. 
and come on out to Flynn Springs. It's going down. You. Hey guys, this is Sean and Derek, and we just really want to thank you for listening to the podcast. It means the world to us. We'd like you to go check out BehindTheSmokeMedia.com. That's our website where we have barbecue resources for you to help build your barbecue business. Uh, We also have events listed, so anything that's happening in the West Coast barbecue movement, uh, anything that's going on, we want you to go check that out so you can learn more and get involved. We also have show notes uh, from all the episodes, so anything we talked about in the episodes, you can find detailed show notes there. Um, Plus, you can just get in touch with us. It's important that uh, we're here as a resource for you, so please reach out. Let us know how Derek and I can help you with your barbecue journey. Uh, Get involved, stay curious, and uh, follow us on social at Barbecue War Stories. Uh, We'll talk to you soon.